Hello, do you want an exotic garden full of colour and architectural form, but you don't want to worry about overwintering plants? Well, annuals may be the way to go. So annual plants are plants that are grown from seed in one season, the producer leaves and the producer flowers and eventually set seed before the winter comes. So they do their full life cycle within a year. And for tropical plants, this is really good because most are really quick growing and it means you don't have to worry about the plants over winter because you just have seeds to look after over winter rather than actual plants. So in this video, we're gonna go through some of my top picks for amazing color, really architectural leaves and very easy to grow plants that you can sow in spring and enjoy the full colorful foliage and flowers throughout the summer and autumn until the first frosts of winter. So the first plant we're going to look at is dahlias and believe it or not you can grow dahlias from seed and flower in the first season so no although they're not strictly an annual plant because they will form tubers that probably will survive into following years they can be grown from seed in spring to flower in the summer and autumn months and probably the most popular range of dahlias for their exotic color are the bishop's children and the bishop of Landaff, and Bishop of York and Bishop of Canterbury. These are basically dark leaved dahlias that grow single flowers of a multitude of colors from yellows, oranges, ambers and deep reds as well. So really nice vibrant colors for the garden and very, very easy to grow from seed. In fact, sowing these seeds in spring, sort of in early, early March time, they will germinate within a day to a week and then they'll quickly grow into small plants that could be potted on indoors. And then once they're big enough and the chance of frost has passed outside, they could be planted out in the final positions, depending on where you live from sort of end of April all the way through to early June. I like to plant them out sort of mid May time when I know the frosts have passed and then they'll flower in their first year. So the next plant we're going to look at and one that I really enjoy growing from seed every single year for the tubular flowers on vines is the Spanish flag. And Spanish flag, it's the common name for it, it's basically because the actual flowers are all the colours of the Spanish flag. So you've got reds, oranges, yellows into white all on one flower and it flowers sort of from midsummer right through autumn until the first frost. And you grow these from seed, which you need to sow sort of in March time, April time, and they will grow into like a twining vine that can grow up other plants to scramble through them or up a trellis or some wires as well in the garden. So you sow these seeds, you can soak them overnight to speed up the germination if you wish, but you just get these seeds, quite big black seeds, put them individually into cells in a nice warm place, a windowsill, heated propagator, keep it above 20 degrees and they will readily germinate within a week or two weeks and then they can be potted on like the other plants in this list and then they can be put in their final planting locations again after the frosts. So depending where you live, that's like April to early June and they will slowly at first grow their twining stems around other plants or per frame and then once they get going by midsummer, they will start flowering and they'll continue flowering all the way through summer into autumn. And then you can collect the seeds at the end of the season so you can grow more of these amazing colorful flowers for the following year. So the next exotic looking plant I want to talk about is Cleome or Cleome or the spider flower. And this is an annual sort of thorny shrub but the flowers are why we grow it because they are sort of very elegant. They come in shades of purples, pinks, even whites as well. And they look truly exotic. As you can see from the photographs behind, you can see how wonderful these flowers look. And they grow really quickly into quite a substantial plant. You've got to give them quite a bit of space because although they're annuals, they will you know, put on quite a lot of growth in just a matter of weeks once they're planted out in the ground. So again, this is best grown indoors to begin with. You can sow the seeds in good compost, keep it nice and warm, about 20 degrees and good light as well to aid germination. And they will slowly germinate over a couple of weeks 
and then they'll form small plants that can be potted on into larger pots sort of like nine centimeter pots and then once again get to the time when frosts have passed because these are tender plants they can be planted out in the final growing positions and then they will quickly grow into quite a strong sort of sub shrub need full sun for this for the really good flowering and then they will flower from sort of mid July all the way again through to the last to the first frost of autumn and winter and the bees and the butterflies love the flowers they give a really exotic look to the garden and then at the end of the season you cut them down compost them and they can grow again the next seasons of flowers with the next seeds that you save from the original plants now the next plant we're going to talk about is not grown for their flowers although they are produced later on in the year but they're grown for their enormous colorful leaves and this is ricinus so ricinus or the castor oil plant is a sort of huge growing sort of shrub eventually and it can be overwintered if you grow in a frost free location but generally we treat it as an annual because they grow extremely quickly and will grow depending on the variety about a meter and a half to three three and a half meters tall it might be a meter or so wide and each leaf can be sort of 30 centimeters across up to about 50 60 centimeters across so it can be really really large and basically there's various forms of this you can get red leaved ones almost black leaved ones very strong green colored leaves as well and basically just go for the type that you like and can get hold of there's a blue stem type as well so various different types of the ricinus and they grow extremely quickly so you grow one big seed in a single module or pot and then it will quickly germinate you want nice warm temperatures at least 20 degrees i like to put it in top 25 degrees and keep it well watered it will germinate really quickly within a week you'll have the first two leaves forming and then it will need potting on into a bigger sort of container so something like a six inch pot and then possibly larger before again it's planted out in its final position in the garden after all the frost have passed in spring and it doesn't really need support although it does grow very very quickly it will sort of take up quite a lot of space it's great at the back of a border or intermingling with other plants that are also big as well and then like all the annuals on this list cut it back in winter and then compost the stems keep the seeds if you've had a long growing season and it's formed seeds in your garden or buy new seeds the next next season to grow more and more amazing architectural leaved plants ricinus is a really good one to go for now another really colorful annual to grow for the garden is a mexican sunflower tifonia and one of the best is Tophonia torch with really strong orange flowers that are produced at the end of stems in abundance all the way through the summer months and a great thing about this is the butterflies and the bees and the hoverflies absolutely love it so it's great if you want to attract pollinators to your garden and the flowers grow in abundance and produce such really nice blooms all the way throughout the season you do need to grow this in the full sun to get those flowers if you grow it in shade then you get lots of foliage but you get very few flowers definitely this one needs full sun it can be a bit finickety to begin with it doesn't like cold wet springs so if it's a bit cold don't plant them out until it's drier and warmer and then it'll soon get established in the ground and it will flower like i said all through the summer and autumn months like all the other plants on the list, this list they're very easy going they very rarely get any pests and they will just produce their color their form throughout the summer and autumn months and with tophonias the seeds are quite large easily to grow in little modules and they'll quickly form nice little plants that can be planted out again in sort of may time or whenever the end of the frost are in your location another colorful twining climbing plant is Ipomoea and there's lots and lots of varieties you can get them from all the colors through white into purples almost sort of going towards the reds and burgundies as well and these are large trumpet-like flowers 
related to the UK bindweed, but don't let that put you off because these, because they're tropical, they will die off in winter and you won't get the plants forming tubers and producing sort of spreading plants throughout the ground the following years, which might be a bit uncontrollable if it's like the UK bindweed. These just grow one nice neat plant that will twine up through trellis or other plants and they'll produce literally hundreds and hundreds of flowers that don't last long, they only last a day and they're best in full sun for those flowers that come out. Like I said, mainly in the purples, you can get blue ones as well, which is quite a rare colour to get in the garden. And the flowers quickly go over, but they're quickly replaced by more and more flowers. Very, very easy to grow in little modules. The seeds are nice and large, grow away quickly. Very good plants to have, scrambling through other plants in the garden. Now the last annual we're going to talk about today is grown for its foliage, and this is Perella. This is a Japanese herb. I've put it on this list because I've grown it last year and I was really pleased with how it performed. It grew nice stocky plants and it's not grown for its flowers this time, it's grown for its foliage, which in the red or the black version of Perella is really stunning contrast of dark leaves against other plants you may grow in the garden. It's a small growing plant, so it grows to about 60 centimetres, so you can grow these in groups. You get lots of seeds in a seed packet and they grow quickly and can cover quite a large area because you can get so many seeds in a packet. Very, very easy to germinate. It doesn't need too much heat, to be honest, and you don't get too many that don't germinate. And then you can plant them out again after the frost, so in May in my location, and they will quickly grow into little sturdy uh, plants. They're not shrubs as such, they're just small plants, herbs, and they are a great foil for other, other foliage plants and other low growing flowers you may have in the garden as well. They're not hardy in the slightest, so they are tender exotic plants, and you can eat them. They smell very nice as well. The foliage is sort of like a minty sort of smell and they just look very interesting in the garden, very exotic looking. So a great one to add, it's a bit different, a bit more sort of easy to grow and quicker growing than Coleus or Solenstormen, which are also great foliage plants for the garden, but they do take longer to get going. So Perella is a great, easy, dark-leaved foliage plant for the garden. So this is just a nice group of exotic looking annuals. There's thousands, thousands more out there for you to try. Look through the seed catalogs and you'll see lots of things that are annuals. Try lots of different things and you'll find some really nice exotic looking flowers as well as foliage plants you can grow in the garden. The ones I've covered in this video, you can get pretty much all of them on my Amazon shop and the link is below in the video. And you can get like the loads of other types as well. So I've gone through some of the common ones, the ones that I've grown year after year and grown really well, but try other things as well and let me know which exotic annuals you grow year after year for really good colorful flowers and interesting foliage in the comments below. If you want to grow hardy evergreen exotics that need no protection at all in the garden, then check out this video and you'll see some of my favorite plants that are pretty much bulletproof.